Hey everyone, my name is Jason Schmaltz and I'm an AMGA single pitch instructor and today I'm going to show you all the equipment you need to start sport climbing outside. So sport climbing is the style of climbing where you will lead up a route uh, but the route has bolts all the way up it that you can uh, clip on for protection and then has bolted anchors at the top. And it's the style of climbing that most people will use to make their first transition from climbing in the gym to climbing outside because uh, it's a pretty safe style of climbing and requires the least amount of financial investment and uh, you don't have to have too much knowledge of track gear and stuff like that yet. Uh, so the very first piece of equipment you definitely want to have is a helmet. Uh, you only have one brain and you definitely want to protect that in the case that you take a hard fall uh, or, or, or something like that or a rock falls off the off the crag while you're blaying or at the bottom. So you always want to have your helmet on when you're anywhere near the wall. Uh, the second piece of equipment you want obviously is a climbing harness. Uh, hopefully by this point you have a climbing harness from climbing in the gym and of course climbing shoes. After that, uh, we get into kind of the sport climbing specific equipment. And the first uh, important piece is the rope. Uh, so you want a dynamic rope. There's two types of rope, dynamic and static. Uh, but the dynamic rope will stretch uh, when there's force on it. So in the case that you take a lead fall, uh, you won't get jolted. Uh, instead, the rope will stretch and you'll have a nice soft fall. Uh, which will help your body, of course, but then it will also help the uh, gear that's in the rock from being shocked and potentially pulled out of the rock or breaking the rock. Uh, so it's a dynamic rope you want. And a typical diameter for a beginner uh, that they're going to want to look at is 9.6 millimeter to 10.2 millimeter. Though That's kind of a good beefy rope that's not so beefy it can't go through gree, -gree but uh, you're going to feel real confident climbing outside on. And the length you're going to want to look at is a 60 meter rope. Uh, you can go shorter, you can go longer, 70, 80 meters, but a 60 meter is the right balance where you can get on just about every route uh, that's available and uh, you're not going to have so much rope that it's difficult to manage. So uh, dynamic rope, uh, 9.6 to 10.2 millimeter, 60 meters. Check that out. Uh, the next uh, most uh, well-known piece of equipment for sport climbing is the quick draw. And the, those look like this. They can be, sometimes they can be a little bit longer. Sometimes uh, this part can be a little bit thinner. Here, let me get that a little closer so you can see. And the quick draw has two carabiners. One, this orange one, can be kind of moved around, okay? And that's the one that's going to clip on the wall. And then the other one you can see is held in place. So if I try to dangle this, the, this, this part's called the dog bone, that will move with it, okay? And that's the part that will hook to the rope. And next time you're in your climbing gym, uh, take note that uh, all the uh, carabiners that you clip into, clip your rope into, are held in place. You probably didn't notice that before. And you'll notice that on the wall, they're allowed to move around. And that's exactly what you want. So there's many companies that make Quick Draws, Black Diamond, Petzl, Trango, uh, Mad Rock. Uh, I bought Mad Rocks. This was one of the first pieces of equipment I ever bought. Uh, they were the most economical. They may be a little bit heavier than some of the others, uh, but they were just an easy entry for me financially. Um, all those perform about the same. Uh, some are maybe a little bit lighter, a little bit sleeker, but they all perform about the same. and can hold quite a bit of force. Uh, you're going to want uh, between 10 and 12 Quick Draws. I believe the Mad Rock ones come in packs of six. I think Trangos also do. Uh, Petzl's maybe packs of five, uh, but you want at least 10, uh, but hopefully uh, maybe 12. And that should be able to take care of every route that you ever get on uh, this single pitch sport climbing. Um, you see I have eight on my belt right now, and that's a typical route. It's gonna have around uh, six or eight uh, bolts, but they can, they can get up there and get to 10 or 11 bolts on some of the bigger climbs. Uh, now, as I kind of go around my belt, I'll show you the other equipment that you need uh, besides uh, those kind of uh, main headliners. Um, the, one of the most important ones is a personal anchor system. And there's all kinds of different personal anchor systems that you can get. Um, it, for more advanced climbers, you may have a, a maybe just one uh, personal anchor. 
But for a new climber, I would recommend two personal anchors, so redundant personal anchors. And these are 60 centimeter nylon swing, slings, excuse me. And I would have both of them attached to my belt with their own independent carabiners, like this. I'll just attach one for now. Uh, but this other one would also be girth hitched to my belt, like I just did. And when I get up to the um, anchors, uh, or the bolted anchors, I would clip both on, and then I could do whatever I wanted to on the uh, bolted anchor station, and then unclip them when I'm uh, ready to be lowered. Um, now I only use uh, one personal anchor, uh, and then I use the rope or uh, the rappel uh, system or whatever as my second uh, kind of point of contact. But uh, for someone who's not that knowledgeable in the systems, I would recommend uh, just having two for now and uh, you can kind of graduate from that uh, later on. So I'll set those down since I unwound those now. Uh, the second uh, uh, piece of equipment you're gonna use at the anchor system is what you actually need to build the anchor. So um, I have a 240 centimeter sling. So if I unwind this, you'll see this can get uh, to be quite large. Okay, and I can use this, I can uh, double it. And uh, with this, I can start to build uh, what's going to look like a uh, quad anchor. Uh, we have many uh, different uh, anchor systems that we would recommend. Uh, you can check out uh, one of our uh, most popular videos that, that shows kind of the top three anchor systems that you can build. But you can see that's a quad right there. And I have uh, already one carabiner that could go uh, on two of those strands. Uh, for the top rope, I would have another one that would be opposing, the gate would be opposing to it, uh, that would go on the other side um, for the top rope, like so. And that would look just like that. You can see the gates are opposing, and that would be uh, ready to go. So uh, these uh, ends right here where my hands are would be connected to the bolts with these non-locking carabiners, which I recommend having at least two non-locking carabiners. These are Black Diamond hot wire carabiners, nice and light, they can hold a lot of force, and those would be clipped on these two ends to hold that anchor up. Uh, similar to the uh, uh, 24 or 240 centimeter sling, I'd also have a cordelette as a backup. Uh, this cordelet is, I think, seven millimeter diameter static cord that's been tied together with a double fisherman's right there, you can see. And just like with the sling, I can build a quad anchor out of this or uh, any other anchor or extend uh, my anchor. Um, so you can see this, uh, if I get this knot out of the way can be assembled into uh, an anchor as I tie it. Uh, so this is about 18 to 20 feet of seven millimeter cord um, and really useful for, like I said, either building an anchor or extending or wrapping around a tree or something like that uh, if you need to. So I'd recommend having not just the um, 240 centimeter sling, but also a cordelette as well. Uh, next thing on my belt um, that I don't always see people with, but I highly recommend is a couple of prussics. Uh, these can be used uh, to build prussic hitches around a rope and to ascend. Um, I don't have to use these very often, but the off chance that I do need to use them, whether it's to get up to somebody or to go if I got off course and I need to uh, ascend back up to where there's a good hold, uh, I'm always happy that I have these. So I highly recommend um, having a couple of these, understanding how to use them. We haven't made a video on ascending yet, but I'll probably make that in the very near future, how to use Prusix uh, or one Prusix and one Grigri to ascend uh, so that you can have that knowledge. It's a very important skill to have uh, as you go outside um, and start doing that kind of stuff. Uh, last but not least, on uh, the right side of my hip is the Grigri. Uh, I highly recommend using Grigri for belaying in just about all cases. Uh, I belay from the top and bottom when I take people out, and I uh, love using the Grigri, uh, you know, the assisted braking 
uh, device uh, just really gives me some security and also has a lot of functionality when it comes to hauling and stuff like that which we made a video on hauling so check that out if you if you haven't already uh, the mechanical advantages to doing that uh, on the left side of my belt the only other kind of uh, main hardware I have is everything I need to do a repel now a lot of the anchor systems now have where you can basically just be lowered off but it's always good to have the knowledge and ability to repel at any time, um, depending on, because you never know what you're gonna get. So um, there's kind of three parts. Uh, the first is the repel extension. So this is a 120 centimeter nylon sling that can be uh, extended out. It will be girth hitched to my belt and extended out with this carabiner that can clip to anything, okay? And then the second part of the repel system is the ATC, in this case, ATC guide. Uh, that I would use to actually do the actual repelling. And then the last part of the um, repel system is the third hand. Um, and uh, I would use this um, uh, underneath the ATC to grab the rope in the case that I was cleaning around or uh, got distracted or something. This is gonna back me up if I'm not able to hold the rope uh, and keep the rope from slipping through the ATC. Uh, if you're not familiar on how to repel uh, with uh, third hand and extended repel, I highly recommend you do that. We do have a video uh, right here I'll put a link to um, that uh, you can check out for how to set that up. But uh, I, I cannot stress enough that uh, you need to use a third hand when you repel, especially if you're cleaning routes or anything like that. And as you progress in your climbing uh, and your climbing uh, goals and whether it's multi-pitch or whatever, uh, you, it's going to be a necessity that you have a third hand because there's just too much going on uh, when you're doing multiple repels and stuff like that. <clears throat> okay, and then the last thing I have on my person is uh, 120 centimeter, 220 centimeter slings uh, with some non-lockers. And this is just, uh, again, you know, if I need to extend something or if there's a little hard part, I'll uh, put one of these, I'll girth hitch it to a bolt hanger or something like that. Uh, so that uh, my friends can grab it and, and pull themselves up if they need to. But it's always good to just have a couple extra slings and carabiners uh, to help in, in some scenarios that we can't predict are going to happen. Okay, so I highly recommend uh, you have these. These are really cheap. Uh, you don't have to necessarily get the Dyneema ones. You can get the nylon ones too. It's fine. Uh, but uh, to have a couple extra, extra slings with you. Uh, but then that's it. That's all you need to get outside and start climbing besides a belay partner. Uh, so I hope you found that video useful. Hey, if you have any comments on uh, or questions about sport climbing or how to get started or what brands you should buy, uh, hey, leave it in the comments and I'll give you my recommendations. Uh, I'm not, not sponsored yet. Uh, may not ever get sponsored. I'm not sure. But, uh, but you know, so my uh, advice will be uh, nonpartisan and look forward to seeing you out the crag. All right. Take care.